Well, I'm going to, when it, after I'm done with work, then I'm probably going to start coming. All right. Yeah. We're on. I think we're on, Deb. Are we on? I don't know. Glad to have you guys here. Good to have uh, Rob and Wendy here. Good to have Brother Paul here. Uh, in, the, in the dictionary under the word faithful is a picture of Paul. Mm -hmm. He's a faithful, <laughs> faithful individual, and uh, we're very happy and thankful yes, for him. All right. I can hear myself. All right. So I uh, picked out two new hymns to open uh, our thing, and we're missing Doris and Jerome tonight because Jerome tested positive for COVID. Bless his heart. He's not feeling bad, so hopefully it'll just be quick. All right, the Lily of the Valley is the song we're going to, to open with tonight. And uh, so I want to hear a good harmony from that section back there. And I uh, hope you guys will do well. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The Lily of the Valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. He all my griefs hath taken and all my sorrows borne. In temptation he's my strong and mighty tower. I have all for him forsaken and all my idols torn from my heart and now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me and Satan tempt me sore, him good Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here, while I live by faith and do his blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I've nothing now to fear. With his manna he my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory to see his blessed face, where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. Amen. I get the words off the internet. <laughs> and I don't really uh, look at the words because I know the words. And when I'm singing it, the words are different than the words that I know in my heart. So <laughs> we, awesome. we sang the words in my heart, not the words on the page. <laughs> No, he just no, got it right off the song. internet. <laughs> he didn't type it that way. All right, well, welcome. Glad that you're here. Uh, Announcement-wise, uh, we're in the midst of planning for camp. Camp is coming. This my deck is meeting tonight. Uh, I heard uh, this morning that we had some additions uh, to our camp numbers, so very grateful for that. Refreshing Mountain Camp, uh, July 11th through the 15th. Uh, if you're interested, we'd love to have you go with us to camp. And we always use uh, counselors as well, so good. Uh, Vacation Bible School, one day Bible school, June the 4th. Would you believe that's like in two weeks? Oh. Woo! Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I'm thankful for Kat, Kat Hickey. She's our fearless leader. She is full of energy, and uh, she will do a wonderful job. We're having a meeting after church this Sunday, May the 22nd. Movie night. It's coming up. Terry Ponton uh, is our leader there, uh, June the 17th at 6 p.m. And uh, good to see you, Denise. Um, let's see. The, the name of the movie just left me, but it, it's a good one. It's a Chronicle of Narnia. Yep, mm -hmm. that's going to be a good one. I've never seen it. It's amazing. You'd think I would have seen that by now, but looking forward to that. We're going to have hot dogs. Uh, and uh, maybe some new food, but none of it is from Golden Corral. So, <laughs> so don't worry about that. Uh, you know, the, Tommy and Danielle are uh, working on a snowflake adoption, and they're going to be raising funds uh, this time by a uh, yard sale 
on June the 18th from 8 o'clock in the morning till 1 p.m. in the afternoon. I ask if you uh, can support them. I know that they would appreciate it. Keep them also in your prayers. Uh, Facebook check-ins uh, help Convoy of Hope. Hope. Uh, it's a great organization. Uh, this particular uh, month is for uh, uh, women's clubs, uh, training and educating women, women, including expectant mothers in early childhood development, nutrition, health, hygiene, literacy, cooking, and small-scale agriculture. So it's check into Facebook. You help that cause. All right. Life groups are still meeting. I'm very happy to say that. Uh, men's life group, Sunday morning, pancakes, uh, and sometimes we have sausage, <laughs> and sometime, most of the time we have eggs. It's a wonderful time of fellowship, uh, good Bible discussion and prayer. Love to have you join us there. Our Sunday night group is meeting. Uh, we, we had a great group last Sunday night, and um, it's our first one back, I think, in a little while. So we're uh, uh, studying the book of Galatians. We're in the book of Galatians. So it's uh, this, this particular week will be lesson number nine. Play group is led by Robin Murphy, and I believe they're meeting on 144 Park, uh, Old National Old Na National yeah. Park? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on 144 New Market, uh, 1030, is that what you said? 10. 10 o'clock, all right. Miss Robin, she's fixing to go on a trip. Uh, so she was telling me. Uh, so anyway, Tuesdays to the play groups, ladies Bible study, what a great job. I came, I was here Sunday or Tuesday before I went to another small group and I was doing something for Robin. I mean, the parking lot was full. And what a wonderful thing. You guys are doing a great job. And 21, I don't know how you get 21 people in that room. Wow, it's amazing. You might have to move here into the sanctuary. But anyway, it's a great group, Stephanie Croft, Wendy Croft. Thank you for guys for doing that. Just started the book of James, I understand. That's a blessing. And all, they're always, you're always welcome to come. So we'd love to connect you with that. All right. Uh, Awana resumes this fall. My deck is still meeting, so it's a wonderful thing. I thought I saw Roger and Flo pop yeah, up there on the are. thing too. All right, so our devotion tonight comes from, uh, and Jerome is watching from home. There you are, brother. I'm glad you're here. We're hoping you're feeling better. Uh, so Colossians chapter three. Colossians chapter three, the last part of chapter three. Um, I don't know about you, but I find that a lot of the New Testament covers the same ground. You know, and, and remember, you know, remember. what's that? Remember, remember, remember. remember. And, uh, you know, I think it's because it's important. And, you know, generally Paul is writing to different congregations, but he's writing to them to encourage them to grow in the Lord. When we get saved, when I got saved, when you got saved, the Holy Spirit entered your heart and dwells within you. But you're still, you have that, you know, what is it Paul said? We have this treasure in jars of clay, right? We, we're on the, on, in our flesh, we're still Adamic. We're still fleshly. Our minds are still connected to uh, the world. And a lot of what Paul writes then is encouraging uh, a walk that reflects that we belong to Jesus, not that we belong to, to the world and its worldly habits. So, uh, a lot of those writings are about growing in the Lord. My Sunday morning, uh, we're going back to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians. And again, it's, it's the same type of a message. And so it's very important. And uh, this particular passage, he's, Paul has been talking about, I'm going to pick up my Bible here because I didn't print this out. You know, he said um, and, and earlier in chapter three, he said, these are some things that you need to put off. These are some things you need to stop doing. Uh, at one point, uh, he says, stop lying. Uh, but then uh, he, he talks about um, uh, things that belong uh, to the flesh. Uh, verse five, therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, uh, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourself once walked when you lived in them. Uh, 
when Paul wrote to Titus, you know, who's going to uh, go to Crete and set everything in order, the church is there. He basically said the same thing. You know, remember before you got saved, you walked this way. This is where you were. This is what you did. And so now you're beginning that, pro you're, you're born again. You, you have the Holy Spirit living within you. But now, as Paul writes in another place, you're working out your salvation. Your salvation is beginning to show itself and you're walking and you're talking. So he says, these things we need to, to put away. Verse eight, that now you yourselves are to put off all of these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on these things. This is what you're to put on. I, I think this is fascinating because... Uh, it's not a list of things that, that you're to do. Here's, it's, it's really things like tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as God forgave you, so you must also do. Uh, you know, uh, those are not our natural reactions to things, right? Our, our fleshly Adamic re reactions to things, our anger, our frustration, uh, cursing, you know, uh, you know, all of those things. He said, now, if you belong to Jesus and his Holy Spirit dwells in you, then this is the kind of attitude uh, that you put on. It comes from within. The power to do it comes from within, but it takes effort, right? It takes biting your tongue. It takes being convicted. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, so all, but that's part of our growth. Will we ever be perfect? No, we're still working. We're still, still growing. So, but those are the things that you work on. Now, all that to say this. That's classic yo-ho, isn't it? Read all the scripture. All right, so here we are, Colossians 3, 18, because he's talking about relationships here. Very similar to Ephesians chapter 5. Wives, submit to your own husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Rob would like me to stop right there. <laughs> That's your memory verse. That's your life verse, isn't it? That's my life verse. <laughs> husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter toward them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Bond servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance you serve the Lord Christ. But he who, is, who, who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done, and there is no partiality. All right, so here's a passage on relationships. And you know, if Jesus makes any effect in our lives at all, it would be in our relationships, in husbands and wives, in fathers and children. Uh, and even in, uh, you know, he talks about uh, masters uh, and, and slaves, or we might apply uh, boss and employee, employer and employee. And thankfully, we don't have the, uh, an, the institution of slavery in America uh, today. Uh, the, when Paul wrote this, that slavery was very much a part of the culture. It was very much, in fact, probably more than 50% of the people in every given, any given town were slaves or were bond servants. Or, and a lot of these people were not just uh, menial laborers. A lot of them were professional. 
uh, you know, doctors or uh, other professional people. So it was a it was a pervasive culture, and Paul gives instruction. How does a Christian respond in that type of culture? So our relationship. Now this passage again is similar to Ephesians five and six. Uh, Ephesians five and six gives a little more detail. It talks about uh, the bride uh, uh, or the wife being. Uh, relating to the bride of Christ, the church, and the relationship between God and his church and as the relationship between a husband and his bride. What a beautiful picture that is. So uh, he writes, uh, Wives, submit to your own husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Uh, and, it, you know, Rob wants us to stop right there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that would be good, but except he doesn't stop there. Uh, and a lot of times... When I was growing up in the, in the church, after I got saved, uh, this verse was used as a weapon. And there is no place for it to be used as a weapon. Uh, in fact, if, this ver if these verses are well served by husband and wife, it sets up a beautiful, beautiful relationship. Uh, and uh, there is love and mutual respect and growth in the Lord, it's a wonderful thing. Um, you know, I think in, in, uh, in days gone by, sadly, uh, it was a different story. It was used uh, to uh, almost abusive, really. And, but it's not meant to be that way. It's meant to, to understand that God has an order. I used to tell young men when I talked to them about getting married, I would say it means that God is coming to your door first. If something goes wrong, if there's something amiss, God's going to ask you about it first. You have that responsibility. And this is asking uh, us as married couples to understand that God does have a plan. And his plan is, is good and it's right. So uh, this is not a demotion or diminishing but understanding a role. It's not a license to abuse. Uh, this attitude is prompted by the husband's unselfish love. It's voluntary. It's not coerced. And he says uh, it's fitting in the Lord. It means that it's becoming improper and it lifts the whole relationship. He says, husbands, love your wives. You know, in Ephesians, he says, love your wives even as, as Christ loved the church. And how, and that's sacrificial love. How much did he He gave his life. That's right. A cherishing, a, a highly valued and prized. Yeah, I don't know how when you have Ephesians, that passage. It's misunderstood. Yeah. I don't either. Uh, except there are people are, are uh, sometimes pluck out verses sure, sure. and make it. I mean, it's just amazing. It is amazing. It's amazing. And, and when we allow it, it's because we haven't read it ourselves, you know. We need to read it ourselves, but that's, you're exactly right. So uh, love your wives as Christ loved the church. It's a sacrificial love. It's a, it's a it's, you know, agape is giving without thought of return. So wives, understand that each one of us have a role. Husbands, love your wife. Does that mean that the wife shouldn't love the husband? That's, usually that's not a problem. The problem with love sometimes comes from the male side of the equation. So uh, husbands, love your wives and, and be not bitter toward them. Very interesting. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't make any... any, any says I, harsh. Harsh? Yeah, okay, it says harsh. harsh. Okay, well, that's, that probably makes a little more sense. Don't be harsh. Because sometimes I think as uh, certain of us can be harsh if we, if we take... We don't get the the relationship part of that right. Children of children again. All right, children. What's what's the duty of children? Obedience, right? Obey your parents in the Lord uh, in all things, where this is well pleasing. Obedience is an important step for all of us. And by the way, we're all children at some at some point, right? So obedience is is very important. Uh, and I love verse. 21, because I think this can happen. Sometimes uh, sometimes 
dads can, we can get this uh, uh, authority thing to the place where we just, uh, uh, it can be abusive. And uh, so fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Uh, how does that say in the NIV, Wendy? Uh, it says embitter your children, but I read that somewhere where it says provoke your children to anger. Okay, I think that's in, in uh, Ephesians 6, oh, okay. 1. And, uh, but it's, uh, you know, the idea of discouragement, uh, man, it's so easy to discourage someone, especially children. Yeah. And uh, man, it's our job to, to build them up, you know, uh, and it doesn't, it doesn't mean, uh, well, I think as grandparents, we spoil our children and that's our job. That's our job. Uh, what's it? It's, it's in, in there. It's in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's in there. Uh, but so, but I would, you know, if I'm going to fall off on one side or the other, I'm going to fall off on the side of being encouraging. You can ride that bike. My mother said, you can be anything you want to be. And I think that's, that's a good, th- good way to be. So that's a great thing. And then the final thing, verse 22, bond servants. You know, here we are again. This is a culture that we don't understand. Bond servants, here, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. So here we are. Uh, I, I found it fascinating I never read anywhere in the New Testament where, 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 where Paul is, advocates overthrowing this particular cultural idea. I, I suspect he was against it. I suspect he thought it was, was uh, uh, you know, it was uh, uh, invasive and, 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 and hurtful. What's that? Authoritarian. Authoritarian. But he said, we can't change the culture. I think that's what he's saying. It's not, it's in this, but you know, the Romans are in charge and we're not in charge. So here's, here's the best thing to do. If you're in that circumstance and a lot of people were, obey your masters according to the flesh. Obey. Again, this idea of obedience. It's fascinating because uh, you guys remember the story of Onesimus and Philemon. Onesimus is mentioned in Colossians, in, in chapter four, I think, maybe chapter five. And, and the whole idea was this relation. Onesimus, uh, the, he was accused, I think, of, of stealing from his, his master uh, Philemon and running away. And of course, when he ran away, where did he end up? Next to Paul. And he wanted to Lord, he was saved, you know? And, and, and then the whole letter is Paul writing back to Philemon and said, look, I know that, this was bad, but in a bad situation, he's now our brother in Christ. I want you to receive him back. And it's, it's fascinating language because he said, notwithstanding that, it, you know, I'm not saying that you owe me anything, but you do owe me something, right? And, and so it's fascinating uh, language. So again, if you're, in that, if you're in that circumstance, if you're in that culture, what's the best posture? Obedience obedience. Do the very best you can. And when you serve, here's a secret. Not serving my master, I'm serving Jesus. And I'm going to work in such a way, you say, well, he's a mean guy and he's, he's, uh, he treats me bad or he does this other thing. The best way to do it is just be the very best you can be. You know, in, uh, in Proverbs says, a soft answer turns away wrath. Mm-hmm. Right? So the very best thing we can do is, is be obedient and, and you serve, not just when he's there, but when he's not there, right? Because ultimately, Paul, you're, you're serving the Lord. You're not serving the guy who owns the truck. You're serving the Lord and you wanna be the best truck driver that you can be to honor Jesus and to honor, uh, to honor him. So uh, knowing that from the Lord, you'll receive the reward of the inheritance. You know, we, we are joint heirs with Christ. We, are, we have that relationship. And, uh, you know, this, this fleshly relationship won't exist all the time. But that 
relationship will always exist and will receive a reward in heaven for, uh, for faithfulness here. <coughs> and verse 25, he who does wrong will be repaid. Listen, God is a great accountant. And if somebody is wrong, God will, will it, you know, there'll be, there'll be a uh, accounting. You know, uh, what did Paul say? In, it's in Romans 12, uh, you know, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. You're right. So because God is keeping score, you don't have to, you don't have to step out and make things right. It's not your job. Your job is to obey, right? If there's, if there's some comeuppance to have to come, God will provide that. So anyway, that's that's how I see Colossians chapter three, uh, 19, eighteen through twenty five. Any any comments, guys? Any we have a comment? All right, thank you. Right. Appreciate your kind attention. Um, I have a, two pages of notes, and I think I went through most of them. All right. So prayer requests. Uh, a lot of prayer requests tonight, and then maybe there are others uh, who are on our uh, uh, Facebook Live, and, and Debbie will look for those, or somebody will, hopefully. Uh, so during uh, the live stream last uh, week, uh, or actually Sunday morning, uh, Bill Mossberg told me about this. Uh, Johnny Baker asked for prayer for an unspoken request. I think that's more than once she's asked for that. So uh, Johnny, if you're listening, we'll, we'll lift up that unspoken request prayer request. And uh, Glenn and Debbie Robinson, uh, Glenn was sick uh, this past week and um, he had sinus infection and a double ear infection. Oh, terrible. And Debbie has uh, swollen vocal cords. She can't sing for two months, two months. She's not supposed to talk above a whisper in that two month period. So we need to pray for Debbie because I know that that's hard. Uh, that's hard. Uh, so the doctor is not sure what's causing the problem. So pray for healing and wisdom. Uh, we got a, a note from Michelle Eastdale earlier uh, in the uh, in the week. Uh, Kevin was involved in a minor automobile accident during training. It turns out he's fine. Uh, but pray for for uh, Michelle and the kids. Uh, this is a tough period of time. And uh, till July 29th. Till July 29th. Wow, that's and he was already gone for like five or six months. Ten, yeah, he was gone ten, ten weeks. Ten before weeks. Before that, it was like yeah, seven months. Yeah. So, so she's doing a great job. Uh, <laughs> I love Michelle, and she got some wonderful kids. But uh, pray for her and and uh, support her in any way you can. Uh, Denise Bittinger, I see Denise is on our uh, broadcast tonight, and she sent uh, a list. Uh, she said uh, for, for Doug, for depression, for little Carrie, for a sinus, or for a virus infection, uh, mom, Peggy, for strength, mental and physical, uh, Sarah and I looking for new housing. Uh, that's a new one, so we'll pray for that. Wendy for recovery from a car accident on Friday. And Michael for guidance. So, Ms. Denise will be praying for all of those. Got a note from Kelly Escalante. Uh, she says, Thanks, Pastor Mike. Uh, praises for unspoken prayers last week, but continue those. Also, mom is in the hospital. So, Dee is in the hospital again with pneumonia, and her oxygen levels are, are out of whack. So, I just saw her. She she went to Golden Corral. Just don't blame it on Golden Corral. She was there, and we had a good time of fellowship. But uh, I'm sorry that she's back in the hospital. Feeling better, but for lung healing. So we'll pray for that. Uh, a request from Sonny Combs. Uh, pray for Allie. That's uh, her granddaughter, Allie, and the mission team sent from Myrtle Beach Christian Academy there in Utah witnessing to a group of Latter-day Saints. So remember that group. Uh Nancy Wright uh, said, uh, please add me to the prayer list. I had two minor bumps on my right foot, had another MRI due to pain, and have some new stress fractures, uh, also healing stress fractures. Left foot is healed, praise God, and she sees a rheumatologist on June the 1st. Roy and I are doing fine managing with this. Uh, so you, 
So uh, thankful for that. Uh, pray for our new grandson, Bennett Cole. Uh, Scott, Heidi, and the girls are doing well. We're very grateful for that, getting settled in their new home in Sharpsburg. Uh, Heidi's grandfather, Jim, did pass away uh, about a week ago. So we're, uh, we're praying for uh, uh, Heidi's family at the passing of her grandfather as well. Uh, pray for Nora, who is in the nursing home. And so remember all of those requests. Uh, of course, uh, Billy Baxter is uh, in long-term care in Homewood. And of course, Miss Betty, we're praying for her. Betty Bishop uh, as well. She's at uh, her daughter's home, Mary's home. So pray for all those guys. Karen, uh, Debbie's co-worker, Karen, how's she doing? Um, they took the whole thermometer off and made her put on a new one for two weeks. So, okay. All we're right. So we're still waiting for okay. the outcome of that. All right. So you guys know that the Moes moved to Illinois. I don't know if you knew that or not. Uh, so I got a, a, a note from Heather uh, today, and she wanted to be included in the uh, in the prayer uh, time. She said, Pastor Mike, I hope all is well in Maryland. I just wanted to email a prayer request and a praise for the prayer meeting. Praises. We made it to Illinois safely, <clears throat> us and all of our animals. <coughs> Miraculously, she said, we were able to prepare and plant our whole garden and clean out our barn in the six days that we have been here, waiting for our pods to arrive with our things. We've had the help of both our families and multiple pieces of heavy machinery belonging to the Mo farm. Our friends graciously sent us off from Maryland, and it was a big witness to Matt's brother who was there helping us move out. My grandma was sent to the hospital last night for the flu, but has already been rehydrated and released. The request, uh, prayers for our kids to make good friends here, and also for them to trust God's timing and plan through our move, for wisdom and strength in all the work God has for us here. For my parents to be comforted as they drive back to Virginia, we are all sad that we'll be so far from them now and prayer for safe travels for them next week. For my brother, Chad, for his salvation. He is running from God and has worn down recently. Blessings to you and many thanks, Heather Moe. It's a wonderful note and pray for them. Uh, brother Dave Vario is traveling. Uh, he's in the mountains, I think, um, and I always think about his dad. I think he's with his dad, with his parents. So pray for Mike, his dad, and he's in a difficult place, I think, physically. And we always pray for Nathan, uh, his son, and lift him up. Uh, my procedure will be on Friday. I got the call today. Friday, I have to be there at 11 o'clock in the morning. So uh, just pray for wisdom. Uh, and uh, you know, I'll be... Thankfully, I'll be asleep, so the discomfort will be minimal until afterwards, mm -hmm. and uh, then there'll be a little bit of that, so I appreciate that. Uh, Brother Jerome said, uh, I used the home test for COVID. I tested positive for COVID yesterday. I'll be giving my doctor, my doctor a call this morning. I talked to Jerome, and he was feeling okay. He had a low-grade fever, and, uh, and then I got a message from Doris that said, add all those... Uh, well, the folks that they were in contact with in North Carolina and uh, uh, both of those meetings. And, uh, and then I know several other people who have COVID, so pray for them. Uh, Bill Mossberg, uh, Brother Bill, working in the back there. I'm so thankful for that. He has an unspoken request and also he's looking for uh, some work. So uh, pray for him as he seeks that. Um, Helen Burdett has a virus with a cough. She isn't sleeping well due to the cough, is very tired. I don't know any harder worker than Helen Burdett. Just a wonderful, wonderful uh, person. Uh, pray for her. Doctor tested her for COVID and uh, I think it's negative uh, and the regular flu, both were negative. Uh, he says it's viral, has to run its course. Uh, Brother Roger Vincent had a stress test this week and they found some issues. He's going to have to go in for a heart catheterization uh, as soon as they can schedule it, probably next week, hopefully. And Flo, you know, had, stitch, had surgery, carpal tunnel. She had stitches removed. 
She's still having some numbness uh, in her fingers, but uh, the doctor seems to think that's a temporary thing that it'll go away. All right, uh, any other prayer requests? Yes, sir, Brother Paul. Yeah, pray for mom with all her issues with all the family members. She lost over the past yeah. nine months or so. You know, mm-hmm. she lost all six family members mm-hmm. in a nine month area. Amen. And I uh, just continual prayer for her health and that she could uh, get more active and do a little something for herself to get, you know, just more energy and ambition and <laughs> accomplishments or whatever. Yeah. Patience for me with everything that I got to deal with, and just tr- trying to be safe, you know. Amen. My biggest concern is being safe. Amen. I appreciate that. And, and just ongoing prayers that I can figure out where I went wrong and correct it and get back on track with a relationship or something, and I don't know, just trying to, you know. Okay. And just. All right, brother, we'll, we'll take that to the Lord. Anyone else? Nobody? Okay. Unspoken? Anyone? All right. Let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and, and uh, ask the Lord to, to bless these. And if I have to leave anyone out, it's not on purpose. We'll just ask the Lord to, he can do all things. All right. Father, thank you for the blessing of being here in your house tonight. Thank you for... Uh, the lesson from Colossians and uh, so powerful and, and important and necessary in our growth and help us, Lord, to continue uh, to grow in you. I'm grateful for those that are gathered with us tonight and, and we recognize, Lord, uh, our need to, to draw closer to you. Help us in that walk. I pray for uh, the unspoken requests that we received tonight. Uh, uh, Ms. Johnny Baker has a request, Lord, and I pray that you bless that and you, we know that you know all of the things about it and It's not unspoken to you. So, Lord, we lift that up. For Brother Glenn, Lord, we lift him up for healing. We pray that he's much better even by now. For Miss Debbie, Lord, uh, for her throat issues, we pray that that you would just lay your healing hand there and that she would be well. And, uh, Father, bring her back that she's able to to sing your praises. Pray for Michelle Eastdale and Kevin and, and their family, Lord, and thankful that he wasn't hurt. And I pray for his training. And give Michelle a... Uh, the things that she needs to make it through this time and help us, Lord, know how to help her and, and uh, through this difficult time. Uh, Father, we just, uh, we just pray for her health and, and uh, safety uh, as she uh, holds the fort down while Brother Kevin's gone. For Denise uh, Bittinger, who uh, made several requests, for Doug, uh, for little Carrie, for her mother, for Peggy, for Sarah and, and Denise as they look for new housing and We pray, Lord, that you would open the door of opportunity for them. Uh, For Wendy, recovering from a car accident. uh, For Michael, Lord, for guidance that he needs. We lift them all up to you, Lord. We know, uh, Father, that that you can do all things, and we we pray that your grace would be poured out upon them. For Kelly Escalante's unspoken request, Lord, we continue to lift that up. For her mom, Dee, Lord, uh, whom we love, and we just pray, Lord, that she would be better soon and, and restored to her health and back at home. For Allie and the mission team from Myrtle Beach Christian Academy, Lord, we pray that you keep them safe. And as they share the good news of Jesus, Lord, may they find a receptive uh, people. For Nancy Wright, Lord, I pray for her, for uh, her foot, for healing there, for for wisdom for the doctors, for Brother Roy as she ministers to him. Lord, uh, she's doing such a wonderful job there. We praise you, Lord, for the new grandson, uh, Bennett Cole, and we're thankful that Heidi is doing well. Uh, We pray for them in their new home as they get settled there. And we pray your blessings on Heidi's family at the passing of her grandfather. I was grateful to hear that he was uh, a child of God. And we know, Lord, because of his faith in you, uh, his faith has been realized. And we're grateful for that. We pray for Nora, uh, Father, for Billy, for Betty. Lord, do you know the things that they need? We pray that your hand of grace would be upon them and help them in this hour. And Lord, just guide and uh, guide their steps and bless those that care for them. We're so grateful for each one. We thank you for the Mo family, Lord, for giving them safe travels. Uh, Father, we we're gonna miss them, and uh, we know that uh, they they're gone to to help family, Lord. And we're thankful that they did make it safely. We pray that 
uh, you'd give them wisdom and uh, strength as they uh, as they work there on the farm. And uh, Father, for um, uh, Heather's grandmother, we're thankful that she's doing well. Continue to bless her in recovery. We pray for all the kids, Lord, and and uh, we pray that they would make good relationships there, and and uh, for them to just uh, to understand that you're in control and you've got them. And I just pray, Lord. Uh, uh, that in the process, Lord, you just draw that family closer together. Uh, for, uh, for Heather's parents, as they drive, Lord, that you keep them safe. And uh, it's hard to, to see your family in a different location further away. And uh, Father, I just pray that, that your, your grace would be poured out on that situation. I pray for uh, Heather's brother, Chad, and I pray that, that he would come to know Jesus and, and uh, uh, and, and, and be saved and, and uh, just uh, just bless in that situation. For Brother Dave, we pray for for traveling mercy, a good time with his folks. I know that his dad has is, is been uh, in uh, kind of bad health, Lord, and I just pray that you would lay your hand of healing and grace upon him according to your will. Uh, Father, for Nathan, we lift him up, Lord. I think uh, he needs you, and, and, and I pray that, that his eyes would be open to his need of salvation. Father, I, I thank you for those that will be caring for me on Friday and, and uh, just uh, give me a, a peace and, and uh, to understand that you're, you're there and, and uh, just guide the hands of my doctor and I pray that uh, there'll, there'll, there'll be some kind of something that would, uh, will help us forward. Uh, bless Brother Jerome as he, uh, as he continues to recover and I'm thankful for him and I pray that Doris won't get uh, COVID and, and uh, that if there's any other folks from North Carolina or where the, in the meetings that they were in, that they also are, are spared the COVID and, and just lay your healing hands there. All those that are in that situation. For Brother Bill Mossberg, Lord, we're thankful for their family. And I pray for the unspoken requests, Lord. And I pray doors of opportunity for Brother Bill. You know the needs that he has and he trusts in you implicitly, Lord. Just guide their steps. For Miss Helen Burdett, we pray for healing for her. Helen Liller as well, Lord. Uh, we just pray for, for Miss Helen, and, and I just pray that you just take that pain from her and give the doctors wisdom that would give her something that would help that. For Brother Roger, uh, had a stress test and looks like he's going to have a, a heart catheterization, and I pray, Lord, for the wisdom for the doctors, and you'll give him peace of mind, Lord, and provide the things that he needs. And Miss Flo as well, heal that hand and, and, and restore it. Uh, for Debbie's co-worker, Karen, continue to bless her and uh, continue to uh, provide for them, give the doctors wisdom as they uh, walk that path together. For Brother Paul, Lord, I pray a, a prayer of blessing on him. Give him patience and grace. Father, uh, just, just be to him the things that he needs and, and, and Father, just, uh, just provide for him. Keep him safe as he drives the truck, Lord. We pray for Paulette too and They've lost many family members in recent months, and we just pray for uh, your presence, your Holy Spirit to come along beside them and, and provide for the things that, that they need and give them grace and peace. And uh, pray for Paulette's health as well. Thank you, Lord, for those that have gathered here with us tonight. We're grateful for each one of them, and, and uh, it's good to be here in your house and, and uh, bless our church and our church family. I know there are many of our, our young women uh, are having babies and and think about uh, Samantha uh, who or Barry who'll be having a baby just real soon almost any day and and I just pray for her and the safe arrival there and so grateful for our nursery workers and and uh, you know our young people and those that work with them so grateful for that bless the Bible school coming up and camp Lord just give us opportunity to love you and serve you and and uh, we want to we want our young people to know Jesus and uh, to, to be gloriously saved. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Give us a great rest of our week and bring us to your house uh, this coming Lord's Day. And we pray that everything that we do will give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you, guys. <clears throat> All right. Very good. When I... Uh, am alone, uh, often I sing. That doesn't surprise you. Uh, one of the songs that I sing a lot is called Wonderful Peace. And so, uh, and I, I'll just say this to, Clint, this 
I'm going to sing the words that are in my heart, <laughs> not necessarily that are on this page. <clears throat> Far away in the depths of my spirit tonight rolls a melody sweeter than some. In celestial life strains it unceasingly falls. Or my soul like an infinite calm. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. In fathomless billows of love. Ah, soul, are you here without comfort and rest? Marching down the rough pathway of time. Make Jesus your friend ere the shadows grow dark. Oh, accept this sweet peace so sublime. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. In fathomless billows of love. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. In fathomless billows of love. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for that good singing and for your kind attention. And hopefully we'll see you on Sunday. And let me tell you, we have a great Sunday school teacher. Absolutely. It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> it's going to be life-changing. Right? All right. God bless you guys. See you.